Hello and welcome to the Thursday, April 20th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Well, we got yet another already exploited vulnerability in Google Chrome that has been patched by Google. Google released a new version of Google Chrome that fixes a total of eight vulnerabilities. One of these vulnerabilities, CVE 2023-2136, it's an integer overflow in the Skia, is already being exploited. This particular vulnerability could allow a break out from the Google Chrome sandbox. Just want to reiterate that uh, we probably should stop uh, asking people to update Google Chrome. There has been a lot of talk about uh, fake update notices on different websites. Typically, the only thing you really need to do in order to update Google Chrome is just completely exit Google Chrome and restart it, which if you make that a daily habit, you should be pretty safe. And Oracle released its quarterly critical patch update. This one fixes 433 different vulnerabilities. Overall, this is not unusual given the wide range of products being covered here, and this is only being released every quarter. There are a couple of sort of noteworthy critical vulnerabilities in commerce, also communication application and Golden Gate that can be exploited without authentication. There are also a few sort of healthcare related uh, applications being affected by these vulnerabilities. Given all the focus sort of in recent years on attacks against healthcare, certainly something that you should pay attention to. And then a couple of updates from GitHub to make uh, open source software a bit more secure, at least more transparent. Uh, one thing is a GitHub option now that if you're building NPM packages will include provenance information. What this means is it will include information about uh, how the particular package was built, what its components are and the like. So, uh, Pretty neat additional insight. It follows uh, the supply chain level of software artifacts specification or SLSA specification that Google has originally developed internally. In addition, uh, GitHub is now making generally available private vulnerability reporting uh, to all repositories. However, it's something that you need to specifically enable. And Microsoft announced that it will redo how it names particular threat actors. In the past, uh, Microsoft has sort of used uh, chemical elements in order to name threat actors. For example, China-related threat actors were either named like barium or chromium, depending on which group they were sort of thought to be associated with. The new naming scheme will use storm names for nation states, and then they have some other weather related names, for example, for financial motivated, for private sector influence operations, and then also for sort of groups in development. The old name, for example, for of barium is now called brass typhoon, typhoon indicating that this is a China related threat. Overall, this is supposed to clean up things a little bit, like they had, you know, multiple elements for various China threats. Now they're all part of that typhoon family, just with uh, different uh, prefixes. This sort of makes sense to clean up uh, taxonomies like this ever so often when they are, of course, first developed. There is only a limited set of threat actors, uh, in this case, uh, known and over the years, of course, it becomes more clear kind of what naming scheme makes sense as you find more of these threat actors. The usual caveat, however, applies that uh, sometimes uh, very similar malware and very similar acting malware uh, may come from slightly different but associated uh, threat groups. So uh, these naming schemes, I think, will never be really perfect, but hopefully will make it easier for the threat intel people to keep track of the various types of malware and types of attacks that they are seeing. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.